Battlefield 2042 could be getting some free-to-play modes or content. Call of Duty might drop annual releases, Hunt Showdown is getting a big performance update, and much more in Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here, and EA is potentially considering a free-to-play release for Battlefield 2042 in some capacity. And before we get into the juicy details, I've got a quick word from our sponsor. Hair loss is a fact of life for two out of every three guys by the time you reach the age of 35. Those odds are not exactly in our favor, and many companies out there will sell you these miracle cure or snake oil products that'll bring back all your lost hair. Well, I'm sorry to tell you guys, you can't really save what you've already lost in the hair department. However, today's sponsor Keeps has clinically proven treatments to prevent hair loss. And the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair that you'll save. They do everything online and through the mail, so you never have to leave your house for a doctor's appointment or pharmacy pickups. Talk to their expert medical advisors 24-7 and find a routine that works for you. And even if you're just looking to get rid of dandruff, Keeps has you covered. Covered. They ship directly to your door and offer refill reminders so that you never miss a treatment. Just visit keeps.com slash level cap and they'll walk you through everything. And even though it can take between 4 and 12 months to start seeing results, the wait is well worth it. It's only hair for the rest of your life. And I think these before and after photos really speak for themselves. Again, prevention is the key here and the sooner you act, the more hair you'll save. Now if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com dot com slash level cap or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash level cap. All right, back to Battlefield potentially going free to play. Leaker Tom Henderson claims EA are very disappointed with the game's performance and say that they're currently looking at all available options to salvage the situation. One option is making aspects of the game free to play. Tom didn't provide info about what elements of the game might go free to play or if the entire game may be going free to play as of writing this story. And it's really hard to say if making aspects or even all of 2042 free to play would help the situation if EA made the the entire game free to play for example paying customers would be absolutely outraged but releasing hazard zone or portal as free to play experiences might be a smart move what do you guys think about all of this let us know in the comments and stay tuned for tomorrow's video with more details about the story dice have a long road ahead of them restoring faith in 2042's direction it'll require significant updates and new content hopefully yesterday's update was a good step towards a brighter future it implemented a new tiered xp system for portal and made some minor quality of life improvements. The only catch is that DICE also released a new featured portal experience called Zombie Survival that turned out to be an absolute XP farm. The mode pitted you against a horde of AI controlled zombie bots and matches would only end after the timer expired after a huge amount of time or when all the human players were killed. However, because the AI zombies couldn't catch you if you're sprinting or climb up objects like ladders or just on top of a car, you could basically just sit on top of any object and farm them to your heart's content, unlocking tons of experience, ranking up weapons, getting the elite tier weapon skins. It's kind of amazing that DICE did not see the exploitable nature of this mode before launching it. Needless to say, players took advantage of the snafu to further criticize DICE's handling of 2042. Players were also quick to point out that on one hand you have DICE specifically releasing a tiered XP system for Portal designed specifically to prevent XP farms from filling up the server browser and on the other hand, they basically launched an official XP farm mode. Portal lead Justin Weave responded to the criticism on Twitter, acknowledging the oversight and apologizing for its impact. Call of Duty Warzone's new Ricochet anti-cheat system is working wonders but still has some major issues. Players believe if a hacker is caught mid-match, the anti-cheat will kick in and nerf their damage to one per shot. A clip of this allegedly happening went viral on social media this week, but the developers have not confirmed suspicions. If it is true that Ricochet is catching hackers and combating them in real time, that's actually pretty awesome. Unfortunately though, their anti-cheat net has some holes in it. Hackers are currently launching 
launching cars Harry Potter style and flying around the map. And exploits like this following big updates are nothing new. It's just unfortunate to see exploits undermining the experience for players when the game's anti-cheat seems capable of intervention. In other Call of Duty news, some senior developers behind the franchise have been discussing a shift away from annual releases. Activision have shipped a Call of Duty game every year since 2005. That's put an immense strain on the studios involved and potentially harmed each title's long-term success. According to Bloomberg, high-level employees at the studio think slowing down the release schedule will please players and help improve sales. And of course, a lot is up in the air currently pending Xbox's acquisition of Activision. Assuming the $69 billion deal is approved, Xbox could step in and change just about everything. They could even make Call of Duty an Xbox exclusive. Xbox head Phil Spencer said he wants to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, and he also says he wants to honor the existing agreements Activision has with the platform partners. However, once those agreements expire, there's no telling what could happen. Spencer has said similar things when the company acquired Bethesda's parent company Zenimax, but after the shock of the deal had worn off, he clarified that future games that do not have existing platform contracts would be exclusive to Xbox platforms and PC. Another wrinkle in the story is that developers from Warzone's current studio Raven Software have unionized. The studio laid off several QA contractors after promising them full-time positions for months. That strike has been going on for several weeks, and now the devs involved have announced the Game Workers Alliance. It's the first union at a major US game publisher, and while the union only represents about 12 developers, the push to unionize in the game industry has been gaining steam for years. And regarding the whole Xbox Activision acquisition, we will have considerably more detail in tomorrow's weekly recap video. Beloved Extraction Royale Hunt Showdown is getting a big performance-focused update next week on PC to resolve several issues. Players have been complaining about new performance issues for the past few weeks. It's gotten concerning enough that the devs decided to devote an entire patch to fix them. Update 1.7.2 should launch next week pending any delays. It'll include several tentative fixes with more concrete solutions in the future. Steam Deck compatibility reviews are finally available on Steam. Valve's handheld console starts shipping next month, but its default operating system is the Linux-based Steam OS. Over the past few years, Valve have done a lot to ease the process of running Windows games on Linux, but despite their efforts, some roadblocks remain, such as anti-cheat support. The compatibility reviews show how well players can expect a game to run on Steam Deck. Of the 67 rated so far, 39 are basically guaranteed to work flawlessly, 23 are marked playable, and 5 are unsupported. However, many have been overlooking the Steam Deck's true killer feature. At the end of the day, it is a mini PC built into an oversized controller. Nothing is stopping you from installing Windows on it, so even if games like Apex Legends or Rainbow Six Siege never get true compatibility updates, you'll still be able to run them via Windows if you really want to. That being said, we don't know how well Windows will handle the Steam Deck's unique inputs like touch sensitive thumbsticks and trackpads, but again, Valve have a robust controller API built into the Steam client and is pretty much guaranteed to have Steam Deck support for Windows users. A launch date for the upcoming PlayStation 5 action horror game Ghostwire Tokyo might have leaked. The game's PlayStation Store page briefly listed March 24th as the game's launch date. It was quickly removed, but not before people had a chance to screenshot it. The game is currently scheduled for Spring 2022. It looks like a pretty interesting game that blends magical combat and horror elements with slick visuals. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to leave your thoughts on Battlefield 2042 potentially going free to play in the comments below. It's a crazy time for the franchise and a lot is riding on 2042's redemption. Do you think the game going free to play or aspects of it going free to play will help? The stealth action franchise Hitman had its subreddit shut down temporarily following Hitman 3's launch on Steam. Members of the group were harassing moderators, claiming that posts critical of the Steam launch were getting removed. These escalated to the point that one of the moderators had their account hacked. 
The sub was then shut down for a few hours, giving the mods time to clean things up and stop the harassment. Hitman 3 originally launched last year as a console and Epic Store exclusive title. Since launch, it's gotten a handful of major DLC updates and a VR mode. More content is coming in with its year 2 update as well. And despite glowing reviews, the Steam version and VR mode have some issues. The biggest problem right now is its pricing. Many reviews complain about it being a full priced game despite launching a year ago and having multiple discounts between launch and now. Others criticize the convoluted upgrades and bundle options that amount to nearly $200 in total. VR players are saying that the mode is broken thanks to bugs that halt progress. There's also been server issues preventing people from playing. Hitman 3 had a pretty rough launch with similar complaints last year regarding confusing pricing and stability issues. Launching on Steam was sure to cause a big boost in player count, but it's unfortunate to see such aggressive pricing when the game has been readily available at a discount on other platforms until now. It's also regrettable to see server outages preventing players from getting into the game considering it's a single player title and Steam offers an offline mode that bypasses its own DRM. Hopefully the developers can sort things out quickly despite all of these complaints, Hitman 3 is still one of the best entries in the franchise and is almost universally praised as an excellent stealth action game. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for tomorrow's This Week in Gaming. We'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.